right, uh, Ira Fitzgerald, I've got Ewing's sarcoma and I'm receiving chemotherapy for it and cannabis helps with nausea and with bringing my appetite back. If we start with the year 1977 when the Misuse of Drugs Act came in, that was a relatively enlightened and proactive piece of legislation that suggested that there should be a treatment centre in the prison system, uh, alternative ways of, of dealing with uh, drug using offenders. Uh, unfortunately, none of this happened. Uh, current laws do prevent me from obtaining my medicine sometimes. Like, it does cause quite a bit of difficulty, especially when I was very sick and wasn't very mobile. I needed help from friends to go out there because I couldn't you know, be wandering around a city on my own when I was sick looking for you know, what was illegal still at the, you know. Because we never got the treatment centre in prisons, we, we never got proper treatment of drug users in prison, and because Despite all the rhetoric, very few people were in prison for drug offences, but many people uh, who were committing crime in order to feed a drug habit were in prison for their uh, theft-related offences, and their, their, dr their drug problem was ignored in prison. Illegality can affect quality quite a bit. There's quite a problem, especially in Ireland, with contaminated cannabis going around, and when you're already sick, you don't need to be adding contaminants into the mix. You want to be getting your know, clean, pure medicine. Like, I wouldn't need to worry about the morphine I get in the hospital being cut. Same way I shouldn't have to worry about the cannabis I'm getting being contaminated. The law enforcement approach that we've seen here has had a disastrous effect. It hasn't done what it set out to do, which was to eliminate drug use through the use of the law. We have a 10-year mandatory sentence for uh, people caught in possession of um, a, a, about uh, 12,000 euros worth of drugs. But many of these people are uh, very low down on the chain, uh, mules, women often from developing countries uh, who end up facing this 10-year uh, mandatory sentence but perhaps were profiting by 500 euro or 1,000 euro uh, at the time. Um, different doctors and different nurses have uh, reacted differently. Some have been for, some have been against. Um, at the start, they weren't sure how it would mix with the chemotherapy, so some of them were unsure of, about that. Generation after generation of drug gangs have become progressively more callous and violent and indifferent. Uh, and the murder rate has shot up uh, basically because of uh, the drug problem and, and the activities of these gangs. Mostly identification just goes on what you're told by a dealer and it works on trust. Some people you'd trust a lot more than you'd trust others and that has been a difficulty. Like even at one stage um, we considered growing just so I'd know what strain it was, what ratio CBD to THC and such there was in the plant, you know, what kind, of, what even, like whether it was an indica or sativa, you're trusting someone a lot of the time on it rather than being able to know for definite like you would in a regulated system. So this 30, 35 years have seen the, the uh, murder rate uh, nearly triple, the uh, number of uh, prisoners uh, increased by three or four times, which is, is practically unique in Europe, and a huge worsening in the um, conditions in prison and, and the level of violence and intimidation in prison, uh, yet uh, they, they remain a, a focal point for the drugs culture and for the spread to every little town in, in Ireland, unfortunately.